Good afternoon and welcome to another Money Making Mom Scope. If you are struggling with just starting, maybe you want to start periscoping, maybe you want to start blogging, maybe you want to start another kind of business, maybe you want to start something entirely different, but you are held back by fear, fear of just starting. You need to tune in today because we're going to talk about how to get over your fear of starting. I decided to just block a bunch of people before we even bothered to get started. So, speaking of starting. For those of you who don't know, I um, got featured on the homepage of Periscope and I got um, have over 30,000 followers on Periscope, which is crazy. Why are all those people blocked? Because those were trolls. Um, and so what happens is right when you hop on, somehow a bunch of trolls hop on and then none of the real people can jump on and be a part. So um, I just decided that if we see a bunch of trolls, we're going to just take a moment and we're going to block them and then, hey, from Wichita, woohoo, uh, we're just going to block them and then we can get on with our with our business. So yay, you made it on, Mandy. Um, so anyway, thanks for your patience. Um, <laughs> blog like a boss. Blog like a boss. Okay, so there is Stacy from Stacy Makes Sense, and if you are not following Stacy from Stacy Makes Sense, big shout out to her because I found out that she is doing a book club on my book Money Making Mom. It started today, so go follow her, Stacy Makes Sense, if you would like to chat about Money Making Mom. She and her followers are reading through the book together. Hi, Kristen. Um, they're reading through the book together and discussing it. And I think that if you need the accountability to read through the book, or you just would like to read through it with a group of other people and discuss what you're learning, um, you need to follow Stacy Makes Sense. And yes, she's so funny. Alrighty, so let's dive into what we're going to talk about today. And this is really um, coming from a lot of questions that I've gotten from people about their fear. There's a lot of fear out there. People are afraid to start. People are afraid to jump in and try something new. People are afraid to take risk. And people are afraid of what the ramifications of those risks can be. And I get it because anytime that I've done something new or sometimes even when I've done something that I've done a bunch of times, but it's just, yes, for any business, um, it's scary. It's scary. I remember the first day that I hit start broadcast on Periscope. My hands were shaking and I thought, what if I am a complete failure at it? What if, you know, all these what ifs were going through my head and many times when I've gotten ready to get on a stage or even pushing publish on a blog post that I knew was kind of sticking my neck out there, um, it can be scary. And so what do you do? How do you get uh, over the fear of failure? Okay, number one, you need to know your why. Know your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is your mission statement? What is the reason behind what you're doing? So for me, for instance, when I was going to start periscoping, 
I knew my why, and that was that I wanted to be able to challenge and encourage women to live their life with purpose. That is my why behind everything that I knew, everything that I do. But most importantly, I wanted to be able to do it in a live video format, in a way that every morning with my morning motivation show, I could get on and I could challenge women challenge and encourage women to live their life on purpose. So know your why. When I knew that why, then that gave me motivation to hit start broadcast. Who are you and what are you about? In my book, Money Making Mom, I talk about the importance of having an elevator pitch. And by that, I mean you need to be able to tell someone in one sentence what you do and what you're about. So for instance, when someone asks me, why do you do what you do? I say, my goal and my mission in life is to challenge and encourage women to live with passion and purpose or something along those lines. It'll be a little bit different every time, but I wanna challenge women to live with intention and purpose. I wanna challenge women to stop living life stuck in survival mode and start living life on purpose. So knowing my why, having that mission statement, that is that helps me keep the blinders on. So you don't wanna start something that's not in line with your why. So that's the first thing is to know your why, and then that will give you the confidence to start. So know your why. Who are you and what are you about? Have that elevator pitch and then be confident in that. Number two, know your what. So what are you going to do? You don't just have to know why you're doing it. You need to know what you're doing. You need to have an action plan. Don't just, for instance, on Periscope, I really encourage you, don't just get on and just be like, well, so I was thinking I probably should try out this new Periscope thing. I don't really know what it is. Please don't do that, okay? Don't get on and just ramble and have no idea what you're doing or why you're doing it. You need to know your why and then know your what. So know why you're doing it and then know what you're doing. And by that, I mean have an action plan. You need to know long term where you're going. Now, I don't, by long term, I don't necessarily mean that you need to know, you know, you have, need to have the next six months of your periscopes all planned out. No, oh, no, please. Okay, I'm doing good if I get them planned out the night before. But I know what I'm doing because I know that I'm going to get up every morning and it's around 7.30 a.m. I am going to get on scope. And so I have an action plan. And I also have a reason for why I'm periscoping. Because you see, I want to build relationships at a deeper level. One of my big goals for this past year was to build relationships at a deep level with my audience. I don't want to go broad necessarily. I want to go deep. And Periscope allows me to do that. So create your action plan and then create goals and break those goals down into bite-sized pieces. So long-term, I want to be able to produce products. I want to have great um, pages. We were just talking about this today where, you know, I can have a URL that I'll lead you to that it's like sign up for this and you'll be able to get this. And there's a long-term plan in place. But right now, it's about building that relationship. It's about getting comfortable on scope. It's those bite-sized pieces for, I have bigger goals in the future, but start small. So know your why, have a mission statement, an elevator pitch to tell people what you do, who you are, and what you do. Number two, know your what. Have an action plan. So that way you don't just get on Periscope or you don't just start that blog post and just ramble all over so you don't go up on stage and just make a fool of yourself because you don't have any idea what you are going to say. You need to know your why and know your what. And pace yourself. Ladies, especially if you have kids, we just cannot do what some people who don't have kids and are in a different season of life can do. We have to pace ourselves. We also have to understand our own capacity. And so if it's just a little bit that you're doing every single week and working and chipping away on those bite-sized goals, that's okay. Do what you can do and don't worry about what you can't do. I encourage you to set 
time blocks on your calendar, make appointments with yourself of when you're going to work on those projects, those bite-sized pieces of those goals. Set the appointments on your calendar, make a commitment to yourself to follow through. So know your why, know your what, and know your who. Who is your market? Who is not your market? Who are you okay with disappointing? You know what? I am going to disappoint some people. I have disappointed a lot of people with my scopes. Just two days ago, there were some ladies leaving comments on my blog saying, I just don't really enjoy scope. And there's been lots of people have said, I don't like the way you do your scopes. And, you know, I want this or I want that or more of this or more of that or less of that. And, and on and on. You cannot please everyone. But my goal is to challenge and encourage women to live with intention and purpose. Not everyone is gonna love my personality on scope. I'm not all funny like Stacy. I can be a little bit funny, but Stacy's a hoot. I don't have the energy that someone like Christy from Raising Clovers has. I don't have the amazing looks that Shaleen has. You know, and I think of all these different people that we can compare ourselves to and say, well, I should just not even start because I don't have that, that, and that. But I'm me. And I can do me. And so I'm going to do me well. And I'm going to just say what feels good, you know, what feels comfortable to me. And maybe that's that sometimes I do scopes that are longer than people would like or shorter than people would like or at a, the wrong time or whatever. But I'm going to do me and do what I can do and the best that I can do. And it's not going to please everyone. And it's not for everyone. But that's okay. Knowing my market and knowing who I'm okay with disappointing knowing my what and knowing my why and knowing my who. These things give me the confidence to push that start, that start broadcast button, to go stand up on that stage, to make that phone call, to write that email, to press publish on that blog post, to go and talk to that friend. Having all of that, then that gives me the confidence to be me. I say it so often, but you are the only you in existence. And the world needs you. The world needs your gifts and your story and your unique perspective. You're not going to be Crystal Payne because you're you. And I want you to be you. Don't try to be me. Don't try to be someone else. Do you because you're the only person that can do you. Don't compare yourself. Don't try to be a copy. Just be you. So know your why, know your what, and know your who. When you know these three things, it will give you so much more confidence to just start. And when you start, and maybe you are going to fumble. I know um, someone who watches my scopes a lot, she tried her first scope the other day, and she said, oh, it was bad, and it was hard. And I said, you know what? I, there's a reason, people, that I didn't get on catch for the first two weeks after I started scoping because I didn't want those scopes to be out on the internet. And sometimes I go in and I delete scopes where they just, I felt like I was just a hot mess and it was 47 minutes of crazy randomness and the, the world doesn't need that, okay? It's okay, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna say, um, you're going to fumble, you're gonna say the wrong thing. This morning, Stacy asked me a question and I completely misunderstood what she asked. Sorry, Stacy, I was gonna email you and I forgot to <laughs> email you about that. I emailed you about something different. But I, I misunderstood what she said and then I answered the question and I watched the replay and I thought, well, everybody else probably knew what she was talking about and I was the only one that totally missed the boat on that. But that's okay, that's how we learn and we grow and we improve and it's part of just starting. You're gonna stumble, you're gonna make mistakes, and here is your choice. In those moments, when you stumble, when you make those mistakes, you know what you can do? You have a choice. You can choose to just say, that was terrible, I'm a failure, I'm a disappointment, I wrecked that up, I'm a hot mess, I ruined that, that's awful, and you can beat yourself up. And you can feel smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can say, you know what? I'm just going to stop it altogether. I, this is too hard. This is too scary. I can't do this. Or you can choose to say, you know what? I failed. I made a mistake. What can I learn from that so that I don't make the same mistake again? That's your choice. You have that choice. And so my challenge to you is to just 
start. I want you to leave a comment and you tell us what are you going to start? What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of it? But what are you going to say? I'm going to know my why. I'm going to know my what. I'm going to know my who. And I'm just going to start. Tell us in the comments or you can tweet at me or you can even send me an email through the contact form on Money Saving Mom. If you say, I'm too scared to put it in public, but I want some accountability. I want to hear what are you going to start? Maybe you're not supposed to start anything right now. Maybe you're just supposed to have the wheels turning in your head. And maybe what you're supposed to start is actually to get brave and stop something. Maybe you need to say no to something. That's what you need to get brave. Maybe these questions of knowing your why, knowing your what, knowing your who are making you say, you know what? I need to stop doing some of these things I thought I was supposed to be doing because I need to steer the ship back in the right direction so that I am living out my why and my what to my who. Maybe that's what you need to do. I want you to tell someone you've got to be accountable. This morning I talked about doing something and telling someone. You have to have accountability. You can't just say, I want to do that, or that's a great idea, or I should do that. No, you need to create the accountability by telling someone, leaving a comment here, telling one of your friends, and then doing something. So setting up some kind of accountability plan so that you actually follow through. That you don't just create that beautiful mission statement, but that you actually turn that mission statement into goals and break those goals down into bite-sized pieces and you say, this week I'm gonna do this, and next week I'm gonna do this, and next week I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna stay accountable to those goals. That's how you follow through. That's how you not only start, but that's how you hit the finish line. Starting isn't enough. You have to keep going and persevere even when it's hard, even when you don't want to keep going. There's going to be hard times, there's going to be struggles, and there's going to be disappointments along the way. But knowing your why, knowing your what, and knowing your who, go back to those in those moments, and that will give you the confidence to keep going. So that's what I wanted to share with you this afternoon. Um, if you have not gone to moneymakingmombook.com, I showed you the URL at the beginning. If you saw that, let me find it because I actually wrote it out. Okay, let me see if I'm doing it right on there. Um, go to, sorry, I'm like doing funny faces. I can't see if that's on there or not. There you go. Okay, moneymakingmombook.com, moneymakingmombook.com. And this is where you sign up for my free five-day course on how I make a full-time income from home. And also, this is where you get signed up for my super special behind the scenes Money Making Mom email newsletter. And it's all free. So that's at moneymakingmombook.com. So, ah, oh, thank you so much, Cyber Chris. I guess your name's Chris. Um, that's very, very encouraging. Oh, you like my handwriting. You know what? Okay, total tangent here, but we're done so we can be total tangent. Um, so in, in school, in grade school, I went to Christian school for the first two years and I came home and I was homeschooled. So I remember in second grade, I got in trouble for spending too much time practicing my handwriting. Um, and I had to stay in during recess one time because the teacher said that I was spending too long practicing my handwriting. So I may have been a little bit OCD about my handwriting, but now I'm grateful because at least um, it's not perfect, but at least it's handwriting that is mostly legible. And when I sign my name, at least you can read it and it doesn't just look like or something. So. Anyway, total squirrely scope, I know, um, yes, but anyway, okay, so yeah, when the teacher says that, I know. Anyway, okay, um, so that's what I want to share with you today, and I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I will see you back tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. for our morning motivation show.